If you or a loved one lives, works or simply spends time in the Rail City, tonight's Safety Watch Q&A is for you. Sparks Police Chief Brian Allen is our guest. And this month we're asking our Facebook viewers to send in questions, comments, concerns to talk about safety in their community. So thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. We appreciate it. First off, we'll start with a question that I received on my Facebook page. Jim Joseph and Christina Hignite both asked a very similar question. When can we expect more officers patrolling neighborhoods like the Vistas and Wingfield Springs, where they say they've seen an uptick in home and car break-ins? First off, have you seen an uptick as well? And what is being done to protect these folks? Some of those crime trends are cyclical in nature and, and they yeah. come up at times. What we're doing as far as our patrol staffing and how we are looking at enforcement is really focusing on the types of crimes. We meet weekly with our crime analysis and our um, crime suppression team and our detective staff to look at what crimes are being committed. We really focus on five crimes, all of the burglaries, residential, commercial, and vehicle, okay. grand theft, auto, and uh, robberies. Okay. And as we see increases in those crime trends on a weekly basis, we can then adjust staffing to meet the needs for those types of crimes. So it's always changing. Good it's always know. it's always changing. Next question, Tim Nichols says he's seeing panhandlers, especially at the intersection of McCarran and the I-80 off-ramp. How is this type of activity typically handled? Homelessness and the panhandling that come along with with that at those locations is is really a, a difficult situation. You have to kind of decipher between those that are want to be and want to live in that homeless lifestyle versus those that have been forced into homelessness based on life situations. So initially our officers will try to make contact with them when they have the opportunities and abilities outside of calls for service and try to determine what their, their direction they really need to go in. Those that try to need resources, we try to direct them within the resources that are available to us. Okay. Um, some of them have mental health issues, then sure. we try to, to deal with those. And then eventually we get to enforcement and go along the lines of citations and arrests. Okay, and, and lastly, we're running out of time, but this is an issue that's really been given attention all across the country. Jessica Williams says, even though I believe Sparks PD has a great conduct record, it would only strengthen the department's reputation if the chief decides to implement mandatory body cameras on all of his police force. Yes. What do you think about this? What do the numbers show and is it even feasible? Well, it is feasible with funding and, and support. However, this is a, a very um, delicate situation and we're taking a very um, t uh, slow approach to our implementation of a program like this. Okay. Um, obviously, there are great results out of it decrease in use of force, decrease sure. in citizen complaints, increased accountability. But there's also issues on the back end of this that need to be addressed before that. With Freedom okay. of Information Act type requests, we have to make sure that we're protecting our victims of crime, especially sure. uh, victims of violent crime in the long run, funding sources, how we're gonna pay for terabytes of storage, right. and uh, those lot, types of issues. So there's, there's a lot of issues that okay. go on with this. I wish we had more time. Thanks so much, we'll have to get you back on the show. If you have questions for the police chief, give them a call at 858-2222. Lines are open until six. Thanks again. You're welcome. Appreciate